This is the way. Hi guys, welcome to Beard's Eye View, and this is going to be my spoiler review for The Mandalorian Season 1. Before we begin, don't forget to like and comment down below, subscribe and ring the bell to be notified whenever I do videos. I do them every single Wednesday, so make sure you keep a lookout for those. And also look out for my review for Season 7 for Clone Wars, because it is coming as well. Yes, of course, there will be spoilers, but I'll put them to the back end of my review, so I'll let you know when they're coming. I realise my Mandalorian review is really, really late, because it's been out for quite a while in the US. Only just coming out on the UK, and it's just finished up. So I apologise for it being late and it's probably redundant because most people have reviewed it already but still want to talk about it because it's awesome. Produced by Jon Favreau and just proving how great of a person he is when he's been given a project. It's it's one of the best things, best TV shows, best Star Wars things, best things I think I've ever seen in my life. This TV show was everything I never, I never knew I wanted and then some. It just... It was the perfect TV show. It wasn't too long, it wasn't too short. It just, uh, there was great characters. Everything was just amazing. Obviously it follows this Mandalorian, which we don't know the name of, um, just being called Mando for short for the most part. It's kind of like a kind of gunslinger, Old West type feel, but in the Star Wars world. And it's all down to him going to do a bounty hunt, finding this, um, this asset, and then it all goes on from there. And it just, it just unfolds so brilliantly, every episode is kind of contained within itself but all the while still moving forward. There's only one episode that actually has a cliffhanger that leads into another episode, the rest of them are all self-contained and it's just, it's like an episodic thing like uh, like you would do with your kind of Saturday morning cartoon series. They're all episodic, yes they're all linked but they're all kind of self-contained and it's, it's brilliant writing the way that Favreau and every other director and producer that was involved with this to make it feel like that. One thing I love is the budget as well, there was a really big budget for this, naturally it's Disney and Star Wars but it paid off brilliantly, it felt like it sat perfectly in the Star Wars universe, like music was really great, the, the theme tune from Mandalorian is awesome, it's su such a great theme tune, characters and like weapons, gear, uh, aesthetic, costumes, they all look really high budget and good high quality. The budget for like any kind of CGI effects with like monsters and all that kind of stuff, all brilliant. All the practical effects were great, the things with the ships and everything. All of it was more or less flawless. I, I never felt jarring, I never felt like I was taken out from the series by seeing something that didn't really work. Everything just sat perfectly in the Star Wars universe. It does take place after Return of the Jedi and I actually really quite like that setting because we haven't really had a setting like that apart from obviously the sequel uh, films. And we haven't had it like, you know, not long after Return of the Jedi, we just assume all is well. So this kind of goes to this kind of underground, underbelly kind of remnants of the Empire, rising of the New Republic kind of area. Where it's just like everybody's trying to find their footing and their feet. The remnants of the Empire, the people like the Mandalorians and bounty hunters and scoundrels and smugglers and all these kind of people. It's like they're trying to figure out where did they sit in the universe now this has happened, now the Emperor's gone. You know what I mean? It's... A very interesting concept and really a perfect place to put this kind of a story. The Mandalorian itself, the character itself, just amazing. It's I haven't had this much emotion from someone that's in a helmet since Darth Vader. You just don't need him to have his helmet off to get those emotions kind of pumping through. He does it so well with this kind of lone gunslinger kind of character that's kind of a good person but he's not a good person. He's trying to get around in the world. And he's got this creed of the, you know, the Mandalorians and everything with the, you know, this is the way. And all of that is really well encapsulated in this character that's trying to just survive in this universe and find his way. Supporting characters as well, all of them had their time to shine and had a lot of fun. Uh, the dude from Happy Manson, uh, you know, it's all in the hips, he plays that what's it dude. He was a really cool character. Uh, the Twi'leks in this kind of um, prison break kind of episode with Bill Burr, he was in there as well. All the characters in that, all fun, all interesting. I really enjoyed that. Uh, I liked the scout troopers that we saw, even though I, you know, I hated them for obvious reasons I'll get into. But they were just, they had their own character at the same time. Uh, the main kind of bad guy, the moth guy, he was really interesting as well. Uh, the IG-11, absolutely loved that, that droid, that was really cool. Uh, Quail as well, by, he was voiced by uh, Nick Nolte, brilliant character, I have spoken, love that. Um, and then obviously, Baby Yoda, I mean, it's not a spoiler is it? Memes have been all over the bloody place, you know about that character now, you know about the child. 
Um, it's the most adorable thing in the world. It, honestly, I, I don't even know whether my own child's going to be that adorable. That's how like cute and adorable and sweet this little thing is, even though he's 50 years old. Oh, just a perfect idea that this is how you build a character that feels like it's something to do with a merch opportunity or something to do with kids and it, it, it sits so perfectly in the universe. It's not a Jar Jar Binks or anything like that. It's a character that is cute and adorable and it brings in extra fans but it works perfectly in the universe and it doesn't feel jarring, it doesn't feel out of place and it works so well uh, like woven into these uh, episodes. Great character. Before we get into spoilers, I always talk about negatives. Uh, that you know, I try to talk about negatives, and normally, most times, I'm kind of nitpicking. But you know, there have been times in the past with filming TV where there's been quite a lot of negatives, and I, you know, I do like to point those out because it's part of the experience that you, you you have when you watch films and TV. But with this TV series, I can't find any. I really can't find any. And this is not me being biased as a Star Wars fan because you know I love Star Wars anyway, and it has its strong points and its weak points all over the saga. It really does. But with this series, it's so well encapsulated with the characters and the storylines and the, the budget, the graphics, the writing, just everything. Everything was really, really, really well done. And I just, I can't pick anything that I, w I was disappointed in or annoyed by or jarred by or taken out from. Nothing. I just looked at it and went, this is solid, like so solid from start to finish. Right, we're going into spoilers now, so if you haven't seen obviously the full season, uh, make sure that you uh, click the timestamp down in my description. That will take you to the end, so it will show you my star rating and the overall kind of thoughts of the uh, season, but it's spoilers from here on out. But that massive gunslinger fight out, that shootout type thing was all awesome, and then the reveal of the child. Brilliant. That was a perfect first episode. Someone I forgot to mention, Cara Dune. She was awesome. So cool. Really badass character. And we get a big full front of her in this Sanctuary episode where they go against an ATST to liberate this kind of village and everything. All that was that was all amazing. I really loved like the, the, the storyline of that and the doing the right thing and everything. He was gonna lead the child there and he finds out people are still hunting him. The Mandalorian's been underground in this uh, planet. I, I really like that kind of underground feel. They're just they're not sure where to be and where to be placed. Uh, the the Master Smith uh, woman lady, she's awesome, really cool character. Uh, I liked her a lot, especially in the right at the end as well of the season where she's like kicking ass and everything. She's such a cool character. The actual prison kind of break episode with Bill Burr and all those other people, um, I think that was one of my favourite episodes. It was the like the most self-contained episode outside of the rest of it, where it was literally him just going to do another job. It was brilliant. The casting was all really, really good. Like Richard Ayardi doing the voice of that droid, Bill Burr being in it. Uh, the lady that plays Nymphadora in Harry Potter, she was one of the Twi'leks. It just, it was awesome. The prison break, you just, you, you know that there's some intentions going on there. He's helping them out. They get the brother out, and then they lock him in, and then one by one he peels them off through these hallways, and it's all so well done. Especially the bit where he's coming to Bill Burr's character, just in the darkness, and then bang, he catches them. You think he's killed them, and at the end when he's just kind of like, he's done the bounce, he's buggered off and everything, you realise he's left them in the prison cell. That whole episode was was awesome. Obviously the main reason that the asset or the child, Baby Yoda, is so integral to this series is because the remnants of the Empire, the clients, they want him for his powers because he's force sensitive and quite powerfully so. Like I say, he's 50 years old but that's still a toddler because they can live up to 900 years as we know from Yoda and he, he has quite a lot of force powers. He was when uh, Mando's going against the mud horn and he stops him and throws him to the side. He uses I mean it ties him out because he's small, but he's able to do that and stop him in the middle. Then force healing comes really big into effect. Quite a few times he tries to heal Mando and he does it with the the black dude like when he's injured and later in the series he heals him as well. It's all awesome and even there's a moment as well where he destroys a uh, I think he draws is it incinerator trooper yeah. He, just like holds the fire back. All of that was great. It just like I, I love that, that, that he's so integral and so important and everything and that these powers he's got and it also kind of ties in really well with like the Mandalorians and all these people in the Underbelly don't really know too much about Jedi and Sith because they're few and far between. There's none of them left. Obi-Wan's obviously dead, Yoda's dead, Luke has become a Jedi and overthrown the Empire but they don't know about that. They don't know the in and outs of why the Emperor is dead and why the Emperor has fallen apart. They don't know any remnants. They just know like rough stories and legends and myth and uh, you know 
musings and little pieces of information here and there. They don't know the full story, so to see it firsthand by this tiny little thing, they're kind of unsure about what it's capable of. And I, I, I love that just because we know about the Skywalker saga and all these Jedi and Sith and such a big deal, it doesn't mean everybody in the galaxy is fully aware of what's going on. But the final two episodes as well, with this obviously the second to last has the cliffhanger that leads into the final episode, it just it's it's awesome. It's basically getting the child back to use him as bait and then just they're trying to basically basically just sort things out and take things down and just and it all goes tits up. All of it goes tits up. Quail dies and that sucks and the child gets picked up by the two scout troopers right at the end where they're uh, Cara, Mando, and the what's his face are all pinned down by all these droids, uh, droids, uh, all the stormtroopers, the death troopers, and then uh, the Grand Moff, the Gideon, I think his name is. He comes out in this like really cool Tie Fighter that kind of folds down, and they're just pinned down. And then the last thing you see is Quail dead and the kid being picked up. And what a cliffhanger that was! The final episode, again, really good, solid episode, good finale. Uh, left uh, uh, wanting more. There's a lot of cliffhangers which I'll get to in a moment. Um, they, they they get out through the grate, but they get you know they get they, they start fighting and everything and taking stuff on because IG11 comes in and wrecks shop and they you know there's more gunslinging action and everything blasters going off everywhere, all awesome stuff. Then they have, you know he gets injured. He, he, you think he's gonna die? He won't die. Obviously, he's the main character. But everybody goes through the sewer grate. IG11 stays with him and he takes off his helmet. And at that moment as well, it's the only time you see the actor's face is in this moment. And it was brilliant. I just, I really liked it that they kept just so minimal. It's like, oh, the helmet's off, let's keep it off. No, no, no. It's part of his creed. He doesn't take the helmet off and he's like in front of just anyone alive. IG 11 is alive, as they say. Takes the helmet off and you get to see him for the first time injured. He saves him with his back to spray and off they all go down into the uh, sewers towards the Mandalorian thing. The Mandalorians are all taken out and it's just the, uh, the Master Smith woman left over. She basically gets them all tooled up and everything tells them you've got to take the child and find his race or uh, train him, that kind of stuff. And basically it's like, you, this is the way, this is your path. Uh, gives him a jetpack as well because he's like, I'm so happy he got that because that was the one thing he was missing and now he gets it. And then later on he gets to use it in full effect. They go down this lava kind of thing in the pits like, and it takes you out and there's a load of troopers waiting for them. IG-11 makes the sacrifice and I, I love that. It's, it's just a real good character arc to find off that character from start to finish of this season. He blows up to destroy all of them. They all get out and then the moth guy comes after him with the TIE Fighter and this is where he uses the jetpack, gets hold of him, blows up the TIE Fighter with a detonator. All of that is awesome. Really love that. And then it's pretty much the end. Mandalorian off he goes and we found out his name's Din as well because the moth guy knows him. I quite, yeah, quite like it. I, I quite like that name. Um, he goes off with the child and that's and the other two stay on that planet. But the, the final moment I just had me jumping out of my seat like with excitement and looking for like looking so forward to the future. The Dark Saber cutting himself out with the Dark Saber from the TIE Fighter and that's the last thing we see is him standing on the tar TIE Fighter with the Dark Saber, knowing how important that is in Mandalorian culture. Uh, how, how many people it's passed through with like Clone Wars and Rebels and stuff and what. It's so many questions of like how has he got hold of it? it, just, oh what a way to end the series. Looking forward to seeing more of these characters and Mandalorian and the Baby Yoda of course, but to find out how he got that Black Saber, oh god, it, I'm so, so excited for the next season. Guys, overall Mandalorian Season 1 was everything that a Star Wars live action TV series needed to be. It had a perfect director and writer in John Favreau, it had great actors, great characters, great writing, great, just great everything, just budget, production, stories being told, length of like the series, eight episodes is more than enough. Everything about it was absolutely awesome. I, I loved every moment of it. I can't find anything I didn't like about it. I'm looking forward to more. That I'm looking forward to see more Baby Yoda, more Mandalorian, more characters. Uh, there's rumours of Ahsoka Tano potentially being in the next season. I'm looking forward to the Dark Saber stuff and what's going on with that. I'm just so excited. It's a good time to be a Star Wars fan at the moment with this kind of content being put out. And we don't really have to wait much longer for the next season. Uh, even three, season three has been greenlit as well. This was awesome. A great introduction to a new character, a great introduction into a new part of this Star Wars universe. I cannot deny that this is so epic and I can't give it any less than my highest score of a high five stars. 
So that's what I thought of season one of The Mandalorian. What did you think about it? Let me know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell. If you want to find me on social media, click any of these. All links are in the description and I'll see you soon. I have spoken.